this week, we're going to be looking at supply and demand, important concept in terms of the interaction of how goods and services are made. Let me start off with some examples that I think will help illustrate it a little bit better. When a cold snap hits Florida, the prices of orange juice rises in supermarkets throughout the country. When the weather turns warm in New England every summer, the price of hotel rooms in the Caribbean plummets. When war breaks out in the Middle East, the price of gasoline in the United States Hold on, I'm trying to adjust that for you. The price of gasoline in the United States rises. The price of Cadillacs falls. What do the events have in common? They all show the workings of supply and demand. Supply and demand are two words economists use most often, and for good reason. Supply and demand are the forces that make econ economies work and how prices are determined. They determine the quantity of each good produced and the price at which it will be sold. If you want to know how any event or policy will affect the economy, you must think first about how it affects supply and demand. This chapter introduces the theory of supply and demand. It considers how buyers and sellers behave and how they interact with one another. It shows how supply and demand determines prices in the economy and how prices in turn allocate the economy's scarce resources. Now, economists use the model of supply and demand to analyze competitive markets. In a competitive market, there are many buyers and sellers who have little or no influence on the market price. The demand curve shows how the quantity of a good demanded depends on the price. According to the law of demand, as the price of one good falls, the quantity demanded rises for another good. Therefore, the demand curve slopes downward. In addition to price, the other determinants of how much consumers want to buy include income, the prices of substitutes and complements, like peanut butter and jelly, steak and chicken, expectations, and the number of buyers. If one of these factors changes, the demand curve shifts. Let's flip over to supply now. The supply curve shows how the quantity of a good supply depends on the price. According to the law of supply, the price of a good rises, the quantity supplied rises. Therefore, it's a positive or direct relationship between price and quantity. In addition to price, other determinants of how much producers want to sell include input prices, technology, expectations, the number of sellers, if one of these factors change, the supply curve shifts as well. The interaction of supply and demand curves determine the market equilibrium. At the equilibrium price, the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. The behavior of buyers and sellers naturally drive markets toward their equilibrium. When the market price is above the equilibrium, there's a surplus of the good, which causes the market price to fall. When the market price is below the equilibrium, there's a shortage, which causes the market price to rise. To analyze how an event influences the market, we use the supply and demand diagram to examine how the event affects the equilibrium price and quantity. To do this, we'll follow three steps. First, we decide whether the shift will affect the supply curve or demand curve, depending on the determinants. Then, the direction of the curve. Does it increase or does it decrease? And thirdly, what will the new equilibrium price and quantity be, based on what we look on the graph? In market economies, prices are the signals that guide economic decisions, and thereby allocate scarce resources. For every good in the economy, the price ensures that supply and demand are in balance. The equilibrium price then determines how much of a good buyers choose to consume and how much sellers choose to produce. So I think it will be an interesting week in terms of what we're going to be focused on with how to apply supply and demand in your daily life.